Hello. So today we'll be talking about how to manage access points, specifically TP-Link. In the previous video, I showed you uh, in an unboxing an access point, an AX3600. More specifically, the model to that was an EAP660. And if you've got more than one, or more than quite a few of them, if you're a larger environment, you're going to want to manage them. So you have two choices at that point. You can either get a hardware controller that you put into the environment. And of course, that has certain limits in the hundreds, by the way. Uh, so there's more than one model. Or you could go with a software solution. This is what we're looking at today. So I'm Bob Pellin, CTO Bob, and if you like these videos, by the way, please, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. We really appreciate that. It helps us out. So first thing you're going to do is go to the TP link. So it's tp-link.com. Go to the website, find the download center. And what you're going to do is you're going to be looking in here at business, business access points, management platform. I actually typed in EAP660. On the bottom there, you're going to see where it says Omeda software controller. That's what we're looking for. So that brings us to this page here. All right, so here we are. And what we're going to want to do is get the latest version, so version four, and way on the bottom says controller software. You've got a few options in there. You could have uh, your answer, uh, questions answered rather. You could uh, you know look at videos and so forth. What we're gonna wanna do right now is click on the control controller software right there. And we are gonna go and let's see. Okay, so I go down lower, controller software. So we want the latest one. And we're, we're doing this in mid-October 2021. So we're going to go ahead and download it. And at that point, I'm simply going to set this up to, uh, say, file. And I'm going to download it. And then it's just a matter of setting up an account, I believe. So I'm exploring this with you. So this is a little new. We're going to go ahead and click on the little folder here and we're going to unzip this into here open up the directory and here we go so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start this and the first thing that you'll notice is we're getting this little click on yes to run it and then I've got install shield we no longer need this actually so let's just go ahead and install it and what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to give us visibility or give well, i guess without it you really can't see much uh, there is also a cloud offering of this um, this configuration and this data coming up i understand that this is something that it's in beta right now P potentially by the time you listen to this it is out so you might have a third option as opposed to just the hardware the software and the cloud version so this is taking a little while i just got noticed that it's asking for so java 8 so you click on yes and of course it's going to bring us to java so i'm going to go ahead and install this and basically the Java here, here, this is, it's still installing it. Do next. Start it. So install. the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask me, I guess, if I want to unblock it from the firewall. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, since this is more or less a demo, I'm going to go ahead and give it some access. And there we go. I'm getting all kinds of little errors, accept the risks. Yes, please and welcome and now i can go and it's going to ask me a whole bunch of information so here's my information here a right, little pop up here as well that so when i started it basically it said you know go to the browser which i've already loaded here so i can move this out of the way so this will stay open and this will be able to monitor. so it's asking you okay what what are you running is it a factory? Is it a home, hospital, shop, you know, and so forth. So at this point, what I want is office. So I'm going to go ahead and click office. I'm going to click on next. I'm a little bit in the way here. And of course, now I have no devices. That's fine. So I could do next. And then it's going to ask me for network SSID. So I could set something up. I could put, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes I'll put in. 
just put anything and I'm going to need to put in a password. And do I want to have guest Wi-Fi or not? I guess I could probably say yes. I'm going to do, actually, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to say next. And this is where I'm putting in the information. So create an administrative name and password to log in. And of course, you'd have to put in something here. I'm going to block this off. Okay, so I do not have an ID. So what I want to do is I'd want to register here to have an ID over at TP-Link. So that's something that I would definitely want to try and see if I have a notepad here because I'm going to want to note this. So probably what I would do is if this is the first time you click on register now and it's going to open up another tab here and it's going to ask you for some information. So we're going to go ahead and type in my information anyways. So. So I'm in Canada right now. It's going to ask me for the email address to associate it to. It's going to ask me for a password. And of course, when you do this, make sure that you do remember what you wrote. So what I'm doing is I'm actually writing it down here. Um, so Omega, here we go. So I wrote it down. And of course, you have to agree. And I'm going to agree to have updates and so forth. Do next. And now it's going to ask me to log in, of course, to activate it. And I'm going to have to go and check my own email, I imagine, at this point. And I'm going to go and here, we, OK, I already got that. So I'm just on my end. I'm actually going to there. OK, all right, we're back. So now I'm just going to go ahead and log in here. And yeah, so where it says ID, I guess, is my email address that I use. And the password I just gave it. And I'm going to say login and bind. There we go. OK, and so now I can say, do you want to have be part of the improvement program? Usually I'd say yes, but in this case, I'm going to say no. Here's all my information. I say I'm done. And now I want to log back in here. And I'm hoping there we go. OK, so now I'm getting some. This is what it looks like. And actually, this is a perfect example. So what you'll see is um, information about CPU, the memory, and so forth. You'll see clients. and. So it's very graphical and so you can add stuff to it. You'll see bandwidth. So to, okay, so that is finished. And at this point I should have, so I've got nothing registered on top. I basically just have one site. I have an admin devices. Okay. So here we go. So on device, click on AP. Status pending. Oh, 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 there we go. Look at that. So I have I have a device now, and if I look at it, let's just let me just make sure that I've got let's do we have a serial number on here? No. Uh, but I do have it finishes with 2764. Okay, so we, we will blank this out when we make the video just to uh, to preserve our uh, our sanity, but so it did actually detect automatically since it's on site here, it's running on. So where my software is running is where this physical access point is. So that's why it is there. If I click on pending, I click on adopt and it's showing me the firmware and all that. I click on adopt. It's adopting. And there we go. It's provisioning. It's configuring it. I think there we go. Connected. Okay, so now that is connected. And so from this point on, if I have clients that are connected, I will see them. And of course, you can, you know, if you had more than one, which is the whole point, you will see them. You can also see which um, which frequency they're using, whether it's the uh, 2.4 uh, 2 or the 5. And so from a performance point of view, I do see those. 
uh, map devices clients. If I had clients connected to it, then they would appear here. And you can s click on insights, I guess, and see uh, known clients. And I mean, there's information here, uh, VPN status. And so, so yeah, there's, there's lots of different things. I guess that this, 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 the statistics um, is probably the most useful. And of course, you go back to the dashboard and you can set up here more than one uh, site. So if you have multiple sites, if you have multiple offices, you can go ahead and set those up individually. And from that point on, what you need to do is you need to give your users, obviously, the SSID to use and the password that's associated with that. And of course, you can set up more than one. And in fact, if I go back to uh, devices, access points, this is the one. And let's see if I go back to settings. So you've got yeah, so you automatic upgrades. If you want to set those up to be automatic, you click on here. And I think this is pretty straightforward. Here you can change the password as well to be all the same. Security, wireless networks. Yeah, so this is basically the SSID I created. You can create other ones. So you can re-click and let's say I wanted a, a, a second one. or a, And obviously you want to have uh, the security be as uh, you know as secure as possible. Let's call it a test. The point is you can create multiple ones with the key. And let's go take a quick look at what's in the advanced settings. So you've got whether you want to broadcast or not. Uh, here's going to show you what kind of uh, WP you want. Do you want to have um, the latest and greatest? I guess it would be the. Uh, let's see if I can just. Okay, I'm uh, having problems going down this list here. Yep, I am. I'm not sure if it's my browser or what the deal is. Okay, so I want, let's say, WPA3, AES, there we go. And you can rate limit it if you want. Let's see what WLAN just want to see if we have what we have so enable minimum data rate control and that's useful when you want to I believe this is um, how you can control how it switches from one access point to another so if you have two that are you know if you end up as I guess as a person going from A to B at some point you are in the middle this is how it decides if the signal drops below a certain point, that's when it hands it off to the other access point. So most of the time you probably won't have to play with these settings. If you do have problems, um, you know, people are getting slower and slower and they're not quite switching fast enough, you can help it by doing this. Most of the time these things are very good at doing it automatically, so you don't have to uh, modify most of this stuff. Um, and again, like I said, you, you can certainly go and um, change a lot of these settings here. So we're going to leave all this alone. I'm going to do a save on all this. And that should be it. So that was the, the, the quick look around for how you set up um, you know, a site, a device. You set up a couple SSIDs. We have a couple of users that can go in and interact with this, and we connected it to the cloud so that you could then go into the cloud here. So it's uh, Omeda, and here's so dot tplinkcloud.com, and this is how you would end up going. You click on your your controller, you click on launch, and off it goes. So again, if you have multiple offices. You basically could have one controller per office. You simply click on it, and all of a sudden you would end up back in here, and you can click on statistics, and you could see numbers. And I mean, there's nothing to see right now because it is empty. I apologize for that, but I mean, you get the point. You'd see your user counts, your usage percentage, the traffic. Um, so again, I mean, it's it does give you a feel for what's going on if you have a very low number. You know, you have one or two clients. Um, or, this case they're like iPads and iPhones and whatever else you have in an environment if you're only expecting three and you go in and you're seeing hundreds well maybe there's something wrong maybe there's neighbors that are connecting maybe there's anyway the point is it does help uh, to understand what's going on in your environment so more information is always better right so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it was useful to you 
And uh, thanks for exploring this with me. This was literally, I opened it up for the first time and, and looked around. So hopefully you understand that this is kind of uh, <laughs> my reaction to what I'm finding as I'm seeing it. And uh, hopefully that's good for you. And if you want to um, you know, leave me comments below, I appreciate that. We do read that. Uh, so I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, also catch us on www.ctobob.com. We'll see you in the next video.